Welcome to the Wellhouse Exorcism. You're supposed to say welcome back to the Wellhouse Exorcism. No. Don't tell me how to run this. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm in charge of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Wellhouse Exorcism. This is your ghost of a host, the most, Shanna, alongside of Pukwa PJ. And I have allowed him to uh, take control this week. How are you feeling about that? Well, already ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I went in with high hopes and I'm like, maybe I should have made my own script. <laughs> so what are we talking about tonight? Well, we're going to talk about American things. Guns. And the house that they created. Okay, that sounds that sounds American. I'm not gonna lie. So we were talking about the Winchester Mystery Mansion. Ooh. Well, the Winchester Mystery House is no, what to use my words from last themselves. week. Is this going to titillate me? Parts of it. Ooh. I, I would think so. I hope so. Am I gonna be scared? Yeah, maybe. No. Honestly, at this no. point, after cleaning up a vomit up in our bathroom I from know. our daughter, mm. nothing else can scare me. Yeah. Stomach bug. I hate you. See, Anyhow. like, the uh, the heating bills of this place would scare me. Oh, well, I understand that. Yeah. Um, really quick, don't forget to put your name in for the giveaway for the Wellhouse Exorcism. Only people here in America, because we discuss Merck and things. But we <laughs> and it's just really expensive to ship outside of America. <laughs> no. Um, we uh, hit over 10,000 listens a few weeks ago, so we're hosting our own giveaway. Get the t-shirt, the magnet, the pin, a cool little ghost named Lobby that we've um, checked out last week. So if you want to hear about Lobby, you got to listen to that <laughs> <laughs> and a whole bunch of other stuff. Lots of goodies in your goodie bag there. So get your name in. A whole bunch of emails and Facebook messages and uh, personal texts came in asking to put their yeah, names in. Yeah, sounds like Lobby is getting a lot of love. Lobby. Everybody Lo wants Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? He likes trains. <laughs> All right, um, Mr. Ghost co-host. Ha! Uh, That's right. I'm your co-ghost. <laughs> well, it's been fun. All right. Huh, we're done. Wrap or maybe up. just ghost. Anyway, the Winchester <laughs> Mansion. <laughs> so, my sources are... Um, Quotes from a book. I didn't read the book, but I found quotes from it called Captive of the La Labyrinth. Uh, By whom? Mary Jo Ignafo. It's a, it's a, it's a last name. That so. is very Italian. Yeah. Okay, what else you got? So, <clears throat> I have the uh, WinchesterMysteryHouse.com website itself. Good. Oddly enough, Wikipedia, because they have it. a lot of cited sources. Hey, I use Wikipedia sometimes. Yep. Uh, Reddit. Anything AI? No. Oh, well, okay. So Reddit, a lot, uh, I have a bunch of stuff from Reddit here. Vice.com. I love Vice. And then I also thought, what the heck, and did some ghost hunters. Oh, and, boy. <laughs> and uh, a quote, no, two quotes from Helen Mirren. Oh, my gosh, Helen Mirren. <laughs> okay, you want to know my sources? Mentalfloss.com that I looked up just now. <laughs> 14 haunting facts about the Winchester Mystery House because I'm not in charge. So I figure I go in with nothing. And it was written by Christy Puchko. Puchko? Pucko? February 2nd, 2018. All right. So mental floss. I have a really good website on my cell phone. Fantastic. There's pictures, though. I like pictures. I have pictures, too. There's palm trees. Cool. All right. Anyway, take it away, sir. So first, a little bit of information about the Winchester Mystery House, for those who don't know. Uh, this house is more of a maze than a house at mm -hmm. points. Um, it is 24,000 square feet. It has 10,000 windows, 2,000 doors, 160 rooms. 50 at least. Yeah. They actually don't know. That we know of. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's something else I have in here. Um, 52 skylights. 47 stairways and fireplaces, 17 chimneys, 13 bathrooms, 6 kitchens. Only 13 bathrooms for that many rooms? <laughs> yeah. I don't think I want to stay there. Yeah. <laughs> Especially I after saw today one with house all the that vomit. Was I'm just good. A couple months ago, it had more bathrooms than bedrooms. Winning. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> We need that in our house right now because of Sophie. So it took an estimated five million dollars to make it, which which makes it about seventy one million dollars in today's standards. Yeah, 
Yeah, pocket change. <laughs> <laughs> So Vice.com, ha- uh, I took their intro to start this off because their their opening is pretty great. Quote, conceived by the secretive heiress Sarah Winchester and built over decades without a master blueprint, the home contains hidden passages, spy holes, cricket, crooked ha- hallways, doors that lead nowhere, and roughly 160 rooms, including an attic hideout that was only discovered by house staff last year. <laughs> and it was written in 2017, so it was discovered in 2016. That's great. I'm going to go over here today. Holy macaroni. <laughs> what did I find? <laughs> it's the house that keeps on giving. Yeah. So before we need to talk about the house, though, we but need... But would you be angry as like a as like a maid going, oh, one more room to clean yeah. now. Like, oh, I <laughs> like, you find her and be like, you know what? Click, click. I didn't find that. Yeah, it doesn't exist. There's nothing here. I'll <laughs> put that book back on problem. the bookcase. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, take it away. I'm just assuming it was a door hidden behind a bookcase, because... Of course. Why not? They might find a family hiding there. Reference to Anne Frank. See that? See that? Yep. Anyway, moving on. So before we talk about the history of the house, we need to talk about how it was made and why it was made. So let's talk about the history of the Winchester rifle. So. Bang, bang. Okay. Boom, boom. Hmm. Yeah. What now? Hmm? Touche. So... (laughs) Uh, in 1848, Walter Walter Hunter patented the Volition Repeating Rifle. And uh, this used a new type of ammo called the Rocket Ball. It looked a lot like a mini ball from the Civil War era. Uh, you know, it had that, it was a big lead ball and everything, except it was partially hollowed out underneath. Uh, similar to a thimble in how it looked. And the hollowed out section was filled with gunpowder and then they put a cork in it. And it eliminated the need to put in a powder bag into your musket and do all that good stuff. So, unfortunately, it was extremely fragile and dangerous. What? Who so, thought? And it was also overly complicated, like tons of weird levers and stuff inside the gun to, like, reload it every time. So, it never caught on, but, uh, well, you know, when he first patented it. But then the next year, Lewis Jennings bought the patents, and he was able to make a working model. And made the inner Mexican, uh, but again, the inner mechanisms were a bit too complex to really make it viable. So here's a little picture of it. I can see pictures. That's that's pretty. So so then came this guy right this here. Guy. So next came the volcanic rifle. Uh, it was designed by Horace Smith and Daniel Wesson. Those names should sound Wesson. familiar. Smith and Smith. Wesson. Yep. Uh, So they fixed the bullets to cartridges, and it resembled a modern-day bullet. The uh, cylindrical casing, metal casing underneath the bullet, and that's where the gunpowder was stored. Made it a lot more durable. Blam, blam. Kapow. No, Batman says that. (laughs) (laughs) And so this is the first real, like, metal cartridge that we would see in rifles. So at this point, uh, Smith & Wesson left Volcanic to start their own firearms company, Smith & Wesson. And uh, and so then Volcanic Repeating Arms Company... They did decently well. Yeah. Uh, Saw I, it okay. And surprise, surprise, Volcanic Repeating Arms Company goes bankrupt shortly after. Of course. Oliver Winchester purchased the company because he was one of the main stakeholders of the company at the time. So he moved it to New Haven and renamed it the New Haven Arms Company. New Haven, Connecticut? Yep. Interesting. Yeah. So he uh, picked up... uh, So then one of his workers, Benjamin Henry, picked up the work at New Haven, and he developed the Henry Rifle in 1860. And it was manufactured by New Haven Arms Company. Several units of the Union used this rifle in the American Civil War. Of course, it was only a year later, right? (laughs) And... The Yankees called it, quote, that damned Yankee rifle <laughs> that they load on Sunday and they shot it all week. <laughs> Darn American Northerners. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they weren't a fan of being on the receiving end of it, which makes sense considering, you know, most of the rifles at the time you had to reload in between every shot. And this was something that you could just, you know, keep firing off. Bang, bang. Blam. I'm very helpful. Oliver Winchester, then uh, he improves on Henry's design. and I approved upon your methods. 
Okay, else. Strong said. <laughs> Did anyone else get the reference? No? Okay, it's cool. So he ends up making one of the most popular rifles in the world, called the Model 1866. And it was nicknamed the Yellow Boy because it may, it had this bronze and brass metal plate on it, on the hilt. And it was able to fire 17 shots before you had to reload. Woo! So it was also America. nicknamed... It was also nicknamed Many Shots. <laughs> <laughs> we were running out of ideas at that point. <laughs> we were all tired from the American Civil War. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, so at this point, France had purchased 6,000 of them. I'm not surprised. To use in the Franco-Prussian War. Yep. The Ottoman Empire purchased 45,000 of them Ooh. for the uh, Russo-Turkish War. And... Uh, that led to a huge number of casualties on the Romanian side. Of course. And they were very surprised at, at how effective the enemy army was. <laughs> Why is that yellow thing hurting me? <laughs> it has many shots. So due to the demand for this model, uh, they made it for the next like 30 some years. Of course. Yeah, 30 years or so. But during that time, uh, everything changed for the Win Winchesters in 1873. When the model 1873 was released, this is considered "quote the gun that won the West." And uh, isn't it crazy to think that we're having the American Civil War, but then we're still manifest destiny? That that, that I know we yeah. discussed that for Gettysburg, but it's crazy to think that like we didn't even have states yet, <laughs> like yeah, out there. Yeah. You know, we still have all that going on, and we're still mm -hmm. trying to take <laughs> over the rest of the, the continent. It's crazy. It really is. So it's the gun that won the yes. West. So in 43 years' time, over 720,000 of these rifles were made. Whew. Yeah. Uh, and that's about 16,700 a year. Over, a little over that. And uh, the gun was, so it sold for about $50 each, which is about $1,200 mm -hmm. in today's money. And by the end of the century, by, you know, by the time 1900 came around, it dropped to about 20 bucks. Okay. Which is six hundred and fifty dollars yeah. in today's money. Six forty two technically. So the company was doing great. Meanwhile, at home, there's Oliver's son William Winchester, and he was the treasurer of the company and had been like pretty much his whole adult life until the day he died. And uh he um married a woman named Sarah, but she was called Sally after her grandmother. So not confusing at all. No, not at all. So Sarah, we can't say I, you know, my brother's name is John. We call him Jack. That's a new, that's a New England thing. So yeah, maybe the Sarah, Sarah, Sally thing is a thing up there. <laughs> I don't know. So Sarah Lockwood Party was her name. They married on September thirtieth, eighteen sixty six. Oh, how romantic! And after the Civil War, they settled down in Connecticut and began to build a mansion on Prospect Hill. It had over twenty rooms. It was approximately twenty thousand square feet. And it had since been demolished and is now the site of the Yale Divinity School. Well, okay. Yeah. So, anyways, but while it was being built, uh, the Winchesters were curious about, about construction. They learned a lot about architecture and design and things like that. Uh, as they are building the house, they were keeping, going to expos and things like that. So, it became a love of Sarah's. And she even went to Oliver, her father-in-law, to learn about real estate investment. It was just like this big thing that Sarah was. A and he's big... like, you're just a woman. Why would you want to do that? you got to stop popping out them babies. <laughs> I would assume. I, I don't know. I mean, he, he taught her about it, so. You seem much better than my son, who is just a waste of space. I will allow you to do this. <laughs> don't know why I made it from the South at this point, but I did. Well, did they ever have any children? Um... Yes and no. Are uh, their names so, Sam and Dean? No. So I'm ju I was just about to bring up one of their children. Not Sam well, or Dean? Their child. Hmm? No. Mm, I would have, okay, fine. So a string of bad, bad luck hits. Because they didn't have Sam or Dean, obviously. <laughs> Continue. In 1866, they lost a child after one month due to marasmus, which means malnutrition. Wowzers. So the baby just wouldn't eat, wouldn't take nutrients. Failure to thrive is what we call it nowadays. Yeah, wasted away. 
Uh, so they were absolutely devastated by this, as you would of be. Of course, yeah. And for better part of a year, they were just recluses. They did not leave the house. They didn't have people over. They didn't entertain guests. They just stayed in the house. I wonder if baby was like lactose intolerant, because sometimes that's an issue. Um, when they're not putting on weight. That's what they check for. Could be. But it was hard to figure that out back then, you know. Yeah, right. If yeah. you had like a good midwife, they might say, you know, use some goat milk or something. But it was rare. Hmm. So. Yeah. And I just feel sorry for them. But Yeah. So during this time, the house was still being built. It was finished in 1868, two years later. In 1869, Sally's, sorry, yeah, now I start calling her Sally because that's what like everyone oh, called her. It's okay. Yeah. I got you. So Sally's father died at the age of 60. And then between 1880 and 1881, in that one year span, about 11 years after that, uh, after her father died, she loses her mother, her father-in-law, Oliver Winchester. No. And William. From tuberculosis. Gosh. Well, okay, not surprising. Yeah. Sorry. If only they had made them antibiotics, we'd been fine. But alas, it was just a common disease. Yeah. We all but die. all that in a year. That's rough. So with that, she inherited the Winchester estate. Valued Congratulations. At about, yeah. It's valued at about $20 million, which is half a billion in today's standards. All she had to do was survive some tuberculosis. Good job. <laughs> So she fled the country after that. She She's like, I'm out. Left the country, went to England. <laughs> Not going to help with tuberculosis, but okay. Yeah. Uh, then uh, one of her sisters, Mary Converse, died of cancer three years later. And Did she have nice sneakers? I mean, I would hope so. Okay, good. <laughs> the, but uh, so her other sisters then convinced her to move back to the States for that. And... With that, she moved to California. As and... far away as she can get from Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there she wanted to build a house where she could just take care of her sisters. Well, she did that. Based on the size <laughs> of the house. <laughs> yeah. So uh... You get a room, and you get a room, and your dog gets a room, and your cat gets a room. <laughs> so Helen Mirren said, uh, and the, re the do you know why I'm quoting Helen Mirren? No, but I'm excited. Okay, so there was a movie in 2018 um maybe it was 2017 about sarah winchester and helen mirren played sarah oh yeah so during uh, a couple interviews she had a couple you know different good quotes that i have here so the first one i have from her is quote she went into mourning and stayed in mourning for the rest of her life mirren explained a bit the way queen victoria did when she lost her husband it was a kind of victorian thing to do wasn't it Mirren also sees the Winchester's fascination with spiritualism as a byproduct of that grief. Mm -hmm. When you lose someone, the losses can be so unbearable, so difficult, that the only way you can deal with your grief is by feeling they are still with you in some way or another. So yeah. that was a Vanity Fair uh, interview she had. Helen were... Mirren looks beautiful. She doesn't age. Yeah, I know, right? She's a fantastic <laughs> actress. Helen so... Mirren, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's something... Um, that we'll get to is the uh, fascination with spiritualism and everything. And that was like the rave it was at the, the time. Thing, yeah. So it's not surprising if she was partaking in it. She definitely played with the Ouija board. No, they weren't around yet. Well, they had like <laughs> things they would use. She invented the Ouija board. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I got that I mean, off. I learned a lot sorry. when I was researching this, but. <laughs> I didn't do any research. I can just say things and it makes it fact, right? <laughs> Maybe the AI told me that. <laughs> so in 1886, she bought the Yanada Via. Yep. Yep. And uh, and its 45-acre estate for $12,000 or $12,570. A steal. She, <laughs> she named it that after the Yanada Alavasa in Spain. Okay. Because she said it resembled it. And she had visited the place 10 years prior with William. So it at the time it was an eight room farmhouse, but very quickly began to grow, and within six months it became a twenty six room house. Oh boy! Yeah. <laughs> so um, and that came from Mary Jo Ignafo and her book Captive of the Labyrinth. So uh, she also said that Sally visited interior and exterior design expos frequently at this point. Um, wanting to make sure that the house was in line with all the popular trends of the time. Of course. 
So nothing like a good maze. <laughs> so Victorian. So she was mostly looking at gardens that were full of trees, shrubs, and flowers. The wood floors were intricately patterned. Nice parquet. Yep. Th- that was something too. That when the ghost hunters went into the ballroom, they're like, "You need to take your shoes off here," and they're like, "What?" And then they like turn the lights on. They're like, "Oh my god, look at that floor!" So. Yeah, like, you know, very intricately patterned floors. Uh, she The st- the ceilings had stencil stenciling done. Mm-hmm. The uh, She had German chandeliers hanging from the ceilings. The windows were asymmetric and pastel colored. The upper windows had a spiderweb tracery on them. Nice. Yeah, all, kind, all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, very ornate. Very. And... Uh, Hi, chic. <laughs> So she made sure that she oversaw everything. And they say it's because she didn't see the contractors as being as up to par as the ones that she had in Connecticut. Well, because they're in California, obviously. uh, And that's also probably why there were, like, peepholes all over the place. Is because she, like, spied on these people all the time. Maybe she's like, if only I could lift that hammer. Oh, it'd be so great to lift a hammer. I want to do this so badly, but I'm a female. And it's I'm, the I'm just too 1800s. Weak. No, it's 1800s. <laughs> Hashtag feminism. I just can't lift the hammer. I would like to, but they won't let me because I work a dress. In this course, it's terrible. <laughs> Nails are my favorite obsession. <laughs> You're singing. <laughs> Sally's a foyer, but only for hammers. So, yeah. She, so she inspected everything herself. And she went worked room to room to room one room at a time if she didn't like a room she'd have them tear it down and start over well when you have the money why not (laughs) yeah right i guess kind of like you're racing something (laughs) it's gone now despite what many people say even the tour guides in winchester mystery house that work was 24 7 365 days a week you know a year that's not true uh we even have letters and i'll read one in a minute here well obviously you have to sleep well, she would like have people on rotations and things like that. She talked to sleep. <laughs> like she has to sleep. No one's sleeping here. <laughs> that would just be obnoxious. Well, the house that big though, you could be on the other side of the house and probably not hear it. That's or what it'd you be like think. a distant thumping. But... She's like the princess in the pee. <laughs> I heard you drop that hammer. <gasps> so it didn't. It you know wasn't twenty four seven like everyone believed. Uh, there were many setbacks where she would end up just sending people home and to like rest and refresh like over the winter and things like that um, it was a 100 degree day yeah well, yeah and um but then there was an earthquake in 1906 oh which, yes i've heard about this i which know this wrecked the house like they she didn't even bother fixing up the north wing it's still in shambles they they never renovated it the entire upper story is pretty much devastated too she ended up just staying in the western wing of the house and on the first floor she never went upstairs after that uh but the earthquake hit april 18th it was a 7.8 on the richter Mm -hmm. scale and it claimed over 500 lives and caused over 200 million dollars in damages and that's in that like money you know 1800s money yeah 200 million uh i have a little newspaper article here so over 500 dead, 200 million dollars lost in San Francisco earthquake. Nearly half the city is in ruins, and 50,000 are homeless. Water supply fails, and dynamite is used in vain. Like so, yeah. dynamiting houses, so I get them out. I don't know. I'd have to look that up. Hmm. Yeah, but so there's that. There's the damage. Yeah. To the house there. I wish our listeners could see this, but they're listening. I mean, if you just look up Winchester House earthquake, you'll yeah. you'll see it. You'll see it. So. That was my favorite porch. Yeah, like, she was devastated by by that. And Wasn't she, like, stuck in the house because of it? No, she actually left and uh, lived in her boathouse for a while. <laughs> I wish I had a boathouse that I could live in. <laughs> um, but, yeah, here's um, just a little bit of proof that it wasn't 24-7 working. Uh, this was a letter from her to Jenny Bennett on June 11th, 1898. She said, yeah, quote, so I'm, I'm on my mental floss here, okay? In 1906, the great San Francisco earthquake caused three floors of the then 70-story house to cave in. I'm oh, sorry, seven-story house to cave in. A 1900 postcard of the place shows a tower that was later toppled by the natural disaster. That tower, plus several other rooms destroyed in the disaster, were never rebuilt but cordoned off. 
As for Sarah, she was safe but stuck in the daisy room, named for the floral motif in its windows. She had to be dug out by her staff as its um, entrance was blocked off by rubble. I thought you meant like... Stuck in there, like, permanently or something. Like I learned something gotcha. in my really quick skimming of this article <laughs> two seconds before we started recording. Anyway, back to you, sir. Okay. So she said, quote, I am constantly having to make upheaval for some reason. For instance, my upper hall, which leads to the sleeping apartment, was rendered so unexpectedly dark by a little addition that after a number of people had missed their uh, missed their footing on the stairs, I decided that safety demanded something to be done. So over a year ago, I took out a wall and put in a skylight. Then I had to have plastering done, and as that could not be done well in heat, which succeeded, I had to wait for cooler weather. Then I became rather worn and tired out and dismissed all the workmen to take such rest as I might through the winter. So. <laughs> oh, alas, I can't. There's just a little bit of darkness over here. Whereas real humans were like, we have a pipe well, broken like, in the basement. We're out of money. I like how when you don't make blueprints, you know, you can... <laughs> Add a section of the house that completely blocks out the sun mm -hmm. for another place to such an extreme that people are falling down the stairs. Here's an idea. <laughs> Carry a lantern. <laughs> Ritual problems. <laughs> oh, man. So that's got to be crazy. Just build on the fly like that and then just not realize like, oh, we need light because I completely blocked it with that tower I just installed. It's let's a nice knock, tower. It's just a knock nice that tower. wall out over there then. <laughs> well when you're rich eh, well we'll fix it later <laughs> yeah not like the tower tower so, staying so i'll pay someone to figure it out <laughs> i'm not a i just went to expos i don't have a degree in this <laughs> i dabble <laughs> so in 1908 this was the first time that we hear of angry spirits haunting yes. the mansion totally we're on spooky podcast it first popped up in san francisco examiner okay with rumors that she was considering selling Yanada Via. These stories spread to like all of her properties uh, at one point. Like it wasn't just that mansion, it was everything she owned. She had to be constantly upkeeping. And if she ever sold any of it, then she everything would die. Everything the light touches is haunted. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, but apparently that part's not true because she did end up selling one of her homes. So, well, you got to pay for it. It fixes up for the other house. I mean, <laughs> At some point, the money has to run out. Yep. But the rumors uh, that and stories about her show her as this very mentally unstable and grief-stricken and reclusive woman. Uh, very untrusting, full of superstition and guilt and fear. She would hold seances every night at midnight to talk with the spirits to make sure she was making the house to, you know, like their their specifications specifications yeah. yep and just making sure that they were still happy with everything they were doing because these were the victims of the winchester rifles and again over seven hundred and twenty thousand of them were made so a lot of victims of these things existed over the years you know so uh and most of them being native americans it's, ah it's their land uh it's the rifle that won the re the mm -hmm. west you know, it's it's the cause for many of them to not be living where they're supposed to be living. So and did she believe she was haunted because of that? Like, did she believe that it was all the ghosts of those who were killed by the... Or is it like everyone else's belief? We'll get to that. Okie dokie. Because the, it depends on who you listen to and things like that. Because the um, there's no real... We'll just do it now. There's no real evidence that she was out of her right mind everyone you know they're like if she was crazy and if she didn't trust her workers why did she keep them for decades the same people hmm. why did people name their children after her why you they know name them sarah or sally <laughs> <laughs> hmm. both both yep. <laughs> first and middle <laughs> so uh, and all of her le uh, letters and everything are all you know they they all show a very mild-mannered person, not someone who's losing her, their mind or anything like that. The seance room that everyone talks about was the gardener's bedroom. 
uh, in reality. So. Like, if it's real life, I'm trying to sleep. Shh, we're having a seance here, Bob. <laughs> I have to get up and cut the rose. I don't care, Bob. <laughs> seance time. You can wait an hour, Bob. There are 159 other rooms, <laughs> at least. <laughs> Sorry. I want it to be haunted. So continue. Feel bad for Bob the gardener now. So now let's talk about the haunting specifically. Oh, let's. So it's said that when the news of Sally's death spread throughout the house, work ceased immediately. There are still nails half driven into the walls uh, as like a constant reminder of the unfinished work on this house. The story says that Sally was constantly haunted by the spirits and that, you know, as long as she kept working, they would not kill her. And if she ever stopped, they would kill her. Oh, boy. So, in terms of this, there, while there are, there's a lot of evidence that says it's not haunted, there have still been many sightings and stories from the house. Did you put any, like, philanthropy in your story? No. So, the theory, apart from, like, her continuing to, like, build the house for the ghosts, they actually believe it was because she was a philanthropist. So to quote Bohm um, from Los Angeles Times, it says, I think Sarah was trying to repeat that experience by doing something they both loved. It's on her and her husband when mm-hmm. they're building their house in New Haven. And it says here, she had a social conscience and she did try to give back. Uh, the house itself was her biggest social work of all because while she was, you know, albeit eccentric, she was the philanthropist who used her family fortune to purposefully employ the San Jose community. So that's why she kept building because it kept them employed and kept paying them. Oh, that makes sense. Yep. But anyway, let's discuss the seance room. Okay. Um, And all the fun stuff. Yes. For people who don't know about the Winchester home, uh, the Winchester home is a labyrinth of a home. Mm -hmm. If you've ever seen, like, aerial pictures of it, it really looks like you're looking at some castle, like, gothic castle or something. Something insane, yeah. And uh, this thing has stairs that lead to nowhere. Like they go up and just yeah. stop in a ceiling. There are doors that open up into a 10 foot drop outside. There are others that open up into the kitchen at like a 10 foot drop into the kitchen. Why not? <laughs> there are, a, there are two different basements. There is that new hidden attic room that was only just discovered a couple of years ago. There, uh, yeah, there's just all kinds of weird stuff. And, they say it's because, uh, you know, just to trick the spirits and, you know, like have these false doors. And I think she wanted to just mess with the architecture because on this website, again, back to mental floss, very, mm-hmm. very historical here. But, you know, you might already mentioned the doors and stuff. It says the the home boasts 150 doors, 10,000 windows, 40 stairways, 52 skylights, 47 fireplaces, six kitchens, plus a trio of elevators, and once groundbreaking elements like wool insulation, carbide gas lights, which, by the way, they have that and electricity. Why couldn't they see up the stairs? Just saying. Anyway, and an indoor shower complete with a sewage drainage system. So I think she was just trying out all the newfangled cool stuff she was hearing about. That's what I think. I like that. Or ghosts. Well, that's something we know 100% that she was just trying out everything because she wanted to be as in fashion, you know, as up to date as possible. You know, but. But to add to the creepy ghost thing, she was obsessed with the number 13. mm -hmm. So there's that, which is why there are 13 bedrooms. Yep. Another explanation for why there are doors that, that lead to nowhere, things like that. They think it's because of the earthquake. It, th- those were doors that led to parts of the house no, yeah, that might have just collapsed, you know? And if they don't have an actual, like, you know, blueprint of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one knows. <laughs> it may have been there. We don't know. Uh-huh. But here's something cool. The Winchester house has many 13 paned windows and 13 paneled ceilings, as well as 13 step stairways. Even her will had 13 parts, and she signed it 13 times. But the pièce de résistance might be the house's 13th bathroom, which contains 13 windows of its own. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes you think, like, maybe she was actually superstitious. (laughs) (laughs) Just a little stitious. Yeah, a little stitious. And there's one one great scene in the Ghost Hunters video where uh, she's like, I'm going to take you up the crazy hallway, or the crazy (laughs) staircase, as I call it. And they're like, okay. And she's like, you're going to walk about 100 feet 
in t- or in terms of like actual distance. You're only actually going to go up nine feet, though. <laughs> so they're that spread out. Yeah, and oh, that would me and nuts. meandering too. Like they turn right, they turn left, they do all these things, and like and it's only each step only goes up like an inch or two. I would hate <laughs> all of that. So, uh, yeah, it's just weird, weird architecture in this whole house like that. So, in terms of the hauntings, though. I'm ready. Now, have people seen these things? I guess yes. you'll tell me. Yes. So, uh, real-life encounters. Many of the employees and some visitors claim to have crossed paths with Clyde. Good old Clyde. Reptilian Clyde? No. Oh, no. not Clyde Peel. We don't talk about him. Did you hear we about that? We don't talk about Clyde. What? Like, he's a horrible manager, and he hides a lot of animal abuse and stuff. That was... I heard about that. Is it, like, factual now? I don't know if it's factual. Like, I have a student who works there. in the court of public opinion. Most people, like, uh, there have been many people who have worked there and have quit because of his attitude towards them and towards the animals. Well, now I'm depressed. Anyway, let's tell me about this other Clyde. (laughs) Um, This Clyde is a mustached man. And he's seen either pushing a wheelbarrow in one of the basements. Uh-oh. Or... <laughs> oh, oh, my. Or trying to repair one of the fireplaces, or the fireplace in the ballroom. Okay. He's been described to management roughly like this. Quote, we really like the actor who is repairing the ballroom <laughs> fireplace <laughs> while wearing the white over- overalls and a Victorian boater hat. <laughs> he was so cute. <laughs> and they're all just like, actor? <laughs> like, What? <laughs> Uh, My worry is, why is there a wheelbarrow in the basement? I don't know. <laughs> like, where it's where we're hiding I mean, the dead bodies. it's a bodies. really big basement. And especially if it was, like, coal heating or something like that, you know, Look maybe. Look picture here. Here's Clyde. Oh, Clyde. So there's a picture of Clyde. He's so good looking. <laughs> so there was actually a Clyde who was a worker mm-hmm. there, I'm guessing. Yeah. So it's more like a residual haunt, then. He just wants to hang out. That there. was, I was getting to that, is that there are residual and intellect, intelligent haunts, and he's definitely residual. He doesn't interact with anyone. Mm-hmm. He doesn't even know that anyone's around, you know? It's yeah. just this recording of a guy, like, you know, fixing a fireplace or walking around with Freaking a wheelbarrow. fireplace all over again. These darn new age <laughs> contraptions. So other things that people experience are gentle tugs on their shirts or skirts during tours. Uh, the report of longtime maintenance worker uh, Denny, who one crisp morning after entering the water tower said he heard the patter of footsteps above him. Oh, uh, uh-uh. he ascended to let the tr- uh, let the trespasser know that the three-story structure was off limits. The footsteps always seemed to be one step ahead of him and one floor above him. And so then he continued chasing these footsteps up and up and up until he got to the roof. No one was there. And he's probably like, (laughs) (laughs) darn kids. Finally found the way up (sighs) to the roof. (laughs) (laughs) But the most common thing that you can see in the mansion is shadow figures. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. Uh, So uh, usually... So, for those who don't know, if you're new to the show, they're shadowy, Mm human-shaped figures that form. And, you know, they're solid black and all that. And they usually, uh, to quote um, WinchesterMysteryHouse.com, it gives you an, quote, are are my eyes playing tricks on me moment. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, but it feels more real than... You know, one of those. Well, and the biggest thing like, about <clears throat> shadow people is they like you feel this incredible sense of fear. You know, mm-hmm. when you, when you're with them, and so you get that fight or flight, but you freeze, get that freeze fear. Yeah. Initially, I mean, having lived yeah, through what yeah. I know. Yeah. The the for the first couple seconds that you see it, you lock up. For but, sure. but your body, like, there's something like in your body that recognizes that whatever it is is not safe and it's going to hurt you, and your body freezes like and it's a deer not in natural yeah. either. Yeah. It's yeah. So to quote WinchesterMysteryHouse.com, they say that the shadow figures or shadowy shapes that resemble people are purported to be seen roaming around corners, down long hallways, and appearing in windows. Then speaking of windows, a former marketing director employed by the house captured a photo of what appears to be a human-shaped apparition looking out onto the front gardens. I saw it, I was like, I don't believe it at all. So I didn't even. It's probably Bob checking on his roses. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even attach that picture to my document here because I'm like, no, I don't believe that at all. It was Bob. 
<laughs> Do you think the shadow figures are people who like um, were in the dark literally because there wasn't enough light going up those stairs? So they're not actually shadow figures. They're just like hidden in the dark. Maybe. No, I'm just being silly and I'm I tired. I have a picture for you. I'm ready. So it's coming later. I'm ready to be amazed. <laughs> so far, I'm excited about uh, Clyde. Yeah. He seems pretty cool. So people also hear uh, heavy breathing. <sighs> there it is. <sighs> <laughs> it's from the guy who was running after the fitter yeah. patter of feet. Uh, uh. <laughs> you don't realize there's an intercom about the house, and he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> and in the ballroom, they hear organ music playing. And <laughs> that's not <laughs> at all. <laughs> No. There we go. There go. That's better. <laughs> uh, and Sarah Winchester was not successful, but talented organist, pianist, and violinist. Well, as a time period, you learned yeah. most girls play the piano if yeah. they were like you know decently rich. Mm-hmm. Organ's kind of fun though. Did you put on a half mask? Da, 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 da. Be so cool. Excellent. I don't know. See, there wasn't an opera though. That's all I got. Okay. I like it. You're welcome. I can keep going underneath you as you, you know, you talk. <laughs> yeah, I could add something. <laughs> so, while some people report being, like, gently touched by good spirits, some of them report being violently pushed while they're getting a tour through the house. Bob has to go check on his roses. <laughs> excuse, excuse me. <laughs> People see uh, doorknobs turn, balls of light floating oh, okay. around the house. Yeah. There's a video of one of those, too. I think I still have the video up that I can show Neat. you. Um, uh, spirit guests dancing in the ballroom. It's and, Anastasia. Uh, the ghosts of cowboys and Native Americans and other victims of the Winchester rifle around the house. No, I'm just sad. Yep. <laughs> and lastly... Many sightings of Sarah of walking course. around the halls. Intelligent or residual? <clears throat> Looks like residual. Yeah. Well, she was so connected to her house. I'm not surprised. Mm-hmm. So several psychics have also visited the house. Um, one of them, the hack Sylvia Brown, was there. <laughs> and in which she, quote, confirmed that there was a curse upon the, the house. There is a curse upon your land and your cow. <laughs> um. Houdini did visit the house. Did he escape? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there were rumors and reports of him visiting for a seance, but he went after Sarah Winchester had passed away. Okay. Um, he never he didn't say he experienced anything or any, anything like that, but he you know enjoyed his stay there. He thought it was really neat. In the middle of a seance, though, in 1975, uh, a psychic, uh, Gene Borgen. That's a name. Yeah. Said that um, Sarah had appeared. And... She's like, what up? (laughs) And, um, quote, Suddenly it appeared as if Mrs. Borgen's face had somehow aged. Her hair appeared gray and deep lines creased her forehead. She felt staggering pain and was unable to walk. It was as if she were having a heart attack. And as she started to fall, she shouted... Help me. Someone get me out of here. <laughs> so that's never a good thing to experience during a seance. No, 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 no. <laughs> I immediately regret this decision. So uh, the Winchester Mystery House earns its name because it really is a mystery. No one really knows if it's haunted or not. Uh, the ghost hunters, they found nothing. They, it was, you know, it's going to going to be an uneventful episode when it's a two parter. You know, <laughs> and half of the episode was the Winche- Winchester house, and it ended with them saying, like, we found absolutely nothing. But you got some really nice floors. Yeah, yeah, right. But, uh, and also that the newspapers exaggerated a lot about Sarah Winchester. How else do you make your money? Exactly. But there were still all of these sightings and all of these stories from people who worked there. Other people who worked there said, I've never seen anything like i worked there for two decades and didn't the same see thing at Eastern one State, thing let down yeah um and while this was the heyday of spiritualism sarah probably wasn't one of them because she was a practicing episcopalian one step below catholics yeah okay so 
And again, the 13, um, she had an apparent love of it, as you said, 13 chandeliers, bathrooms, hooks, and robes. <laughs> yes. This is my number. I need this to be 13. Thank you. Yep. Only 13 nails in that wall, please. Thank you. <laughs> so one person did an Ask Me Anything on Reddit. And one person, uh, someone named Pierogies and Kung Fu. I love it. Asked, what's the craziest slash scariest slash moment that you've had in the house? Anything weird or unexplained to you or stories that we heard? And the, this woman said, the creepiest moment that I've had in the house was once when I was leading a tour, there was this one door that kept opening and closing. I knew it wasn't a fan because it was pointing away from the door and it wasn't moving. I knew there wasn't anyone on the other side of the door because we don't often send people into that part of the house to clean. And that's always on a Wednesday. This was Tuesday. It couldn't have just been a breeze because the door led to another part of the house that was inside and there were no open windows in the rooms on the other side of the door. Still hmm. don't know what it was. Also, to add to the creepiness, the room was on the other side of the, that was on the other side of the door was the same room that Mrs. Winchester passed away in. Was it Bob's room? <laughs> He's trying to escape from this seance. Not, not Clyde's room? <laughs> no, not Clyde. And then He's busy in the basement with his wheelbarrow. Reddit user Fluid Display 70, 90, 7093. I love these words. Posted this picture. What are we looking at here? So here he is in the reflection of this window and next to him. I find this to be the least compelling picture that I found. I think it's just a smudge or a glare. I don't see a face there. Huh. Well, it depends. Because if this is like steps behind him, this could be like opening to a different room. And it could just be light coming in. So like yeah. I don't really... I think it's cool. He posted all over Reddit. He posted in the ghost subreddit and the paranormal subreddit and all these subreddits. And he's like, look, at the Winchester house is haunted. And not one person's like, I believe you. <laughs> I didn't see one positive reply. They're all like, no. <laughs> That's cool. So next up. My AI can make a better one than that. This guy said, I took a picture of this hallway and look what I found in the top right corner. Top right corner. Okay, so right now we're looking at a hallway, and it looks kind of like a cap, like a Z. Mm -hmm. uh, and this person's at the bottom right of the Z, looking up at the top left of the Z. And there's a little blackened room, like closet, at the end of it. So I'm going to zoom in to right up here, okay? Oh, gosh. I'm ready. No! <laughs> nope. Yeah, there is a face. Scroll like, past There that. is an obvious face. You scrolled face. past, right? Did, thank yep. you. No, thank So you. I can't give credit to that one because the person deleted their account. They didn't delete the post, but they deleted their account Maybe from Reddit. Maybe it's fake. But that one did not like that. Right? That, no. that was a good picture. Next is from Additional Travels 911, also yeah. on Reddit. So they, oh, so this room they were at, uh, they were taking a picture of the picture I showed you with Clyde. Yes. So it's a room like dedicated to all those workers. Love Clyde. Okay. You ready for Clyde. this? Uh, no. You see it? What am I supposed to be seeing? Well, I see the picture of Clyde here. Yeah. No, behind it. Well, I can't see from here. Oh. Oh, no. Thank <laughs> you. You want to turn it and I can actually see like the screen. Yeah. Ah. But, Okay. Could somebody have, like, used a shading effect and made this? Okay, so look at the feet. Probably. But then some people are like, those look like hooves. I don't know. Is this a fake? Or is that hmm. a really creepy picture there? I don't know. But the wood floor We'll is post gorgeous. all these on our Facebook page, yes. so. It looks like... Um, remember when we were kids, remember we're going way back now, remember the raisins, like the, the, they used to dance. The dancing raisins, yes. yeah. It looks like a raisin is behind it, because it's just like it's an amorphous black blob behind the picture, which is on an easel, and then there's these, like, two little feet at the bottom that are white, and the other hooves. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. And some people are like, it could easily be someone all in black with white shoes, with their back to some to you. That already happened. Bending over. In, on know? Eastern State. All right. That already happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That kind of situation. So, yeah, that's like, it's an that, that's such picture. a compelling picture right there. I don't know. All right. Cal so, they're California reasons, too. So, the person who, oh, we did it. <laughs> the person who posted this, um, they said, one, this was behind the velvet rope in the ballroom. No guests were back, were back there. 
Two, I made it a point that uh, that night to just take pictures of the rooms and not the tour guide. Three, even if I got a snap of the tour guide, I'm confident I didn't, I knew she was wearing black shoes, and she definitely wasn't hooded. Four, everyone I was with there that night confirmed uh, my account of no one being back there. Hmm. Well, where are they now, huh? Show me <laughs> evidence. So next one, uh, another person on Reddit named Queen of Cups. I love it. Uh, she posted this picture. I'm pretty sure this one is a fake, but I That's still thought okay. it was a creepy picture. Can you see it? I'm ready to go. That could just be someone. I think like... there's just someone standing on the other side of the door, yeah. right? But it's just obscure enough that it could be. Well, you know, maybe he just wanted some tea. Yeah. It's a nice tea set set up here. But what in this picture, there are um it's a dining room of some kind, or like maybe a, a study. Yeah, well, and, it's a dining room or like a little settee, like a, a parlor. Yeah, and off to the uh, top left of the picture, there are two French doors that open up into a hallway, and there is the black silhouette of a man in a cowboy hat Yeah, behind the French doors. Like he just walked in, like, because there's a door behind him. Mm-hmm, yeah. And it's all black. It's a shadow figure. So it looks like he just entered the house. Yeah. It's the hat man. Or he's leaving the house. Oh, looks like he's coming in. I think it's just someone in the parlor. Yeah. Sorry. So this person, uh, yeah, they're convinced that was a ghost that they there wasn't anyone there when they took the picture. Well, if they, I mean know. that that would be kind of cool though. Like, yeah. if there was actually no one there. Hmm. Um. So yeah, that is the evidence I have for you there. Hmm. So what are your thoughts? Is it haunted or not? Yes, but not to the extreme that everyone says. I don't think she was crazy, and I don't think that she was doing this to, like, you know, placate some ghosts out there. Yeah, I don't believe that. Because I don't think that they would be attacking her. She's just a nice old lady. She ain't Mm -hmm. gonna hold no gun to anybody. Um, But I do think there's probably residual hauntings, of course. Exactly, yeah. Because it was so busy for so many years. People are, like, were, like, really attached to it because it was a way to make money in this community, so. It was almost 40 years of people working Mm -hmm. in this space. So, So. and of course, people dying and getting hurt from the the earthquake, you have that kind of like turbulation happening. So Mm -hmm. I think it is. I just don't think it's uh, like she's not cray cray. Yeah. There's no curse on the land or anything like that. Um, So here's my thing. Jackie, you're in California. I would like your input on this because. (laughs) Go visit. (laughs) (laughs) Because she's probably already been there. She probably knows all about it. (laughs) She'd be like, well, actually. (laughs) I want to hear your thoughts, Jackie. Um, so is that it? That's all I have for you. All right. Well, excellent job. I was titillated. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so once again, I do want to say, please put your name in for the running to get the giveaway. I have a whole bunch of names, but everyone is messaging me. It's okay to comment on the pictures, guys. Like, <laughs> if I think they just want to talk to me personally. It's okay. Um, that being said, I'm really excited. Full Send Rejects has asked Wellhouse Exorcism to do a historical overview of a certain area here in Pennsylvania for um, a series they're doing on missing people. So I will be doing a crossover episode with the Full Send Rejects podcast. I'm really excited about it. And I, I am pretty excited about that. You're yeah. not invited. What? They asked for the ghost of a host at the most. You're the ghost co-host, not the, host. the most. Yeah, the go host. The co ghost. Sure. Yeah. The the co ghost. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> you might be allowed to come, I don't know. I they were talking to me personally, because I'm just so cool and I'm really good at my research. But anyway Excuse me, I was talking to them too. No, you weren't. I was. No. I'm yeah. in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> can't he doesn't pop up his PJ, it pops up his games overboard, so nan 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 he can't prove it. Anywho. Who made the website? <laughs> <laughs> who helped with the Check website? Mate. <sighs> who made all the logos? And who makes all the merch? Who made the music? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> who great added to the music? For our listeners. <laughs> Especially for Danger and Dice. I'm the piano. <laughs> anyway. So obviously we work together. It's wonderful. <laughs> Until it isn't, like right now. <laughs> So anyway, I'll let you know about Listeners, the full. Listeners, I'm not in next week's episode. 
just, just, just going to work know. alone. <laughs> uh, anywho, so I'll be on there. I'll let you guys know and I'll post um, on our Facebook page when you can listen to it and where to listen to it, which will be on Spotify. But as always, thank you for being wonderful and for being here with us. We appreciate talking to you. Mm-hmm. We love when you message us with ideas. It makes yes. us happy. Thank you all for listening. And as always, think spooky thoughts. <laughs>